Boy, I sure do like it when you show up. I'm John Zadar, the host of On Top and Hot, and this is July 10th, Sunday. Now, for those of you that have been here a hundred times, thanks. I appreciate it. We got the news over there to keep you busy while I let everybody else know what we do here. We look at OTC and penny stocks. I got great headlines. Got super technicals. I got something brewing that we need to be paying attention to. And I bring these stocks to your attention. Now, penny stocks are any stock under $5, so they're not necessarily all on the OTC market. They can be on any market as long as they're under 5 bucks, and we do look at those too. Now, I am over here at the otcmarkets.com website. You can't see it behind the news there, but that's where we're at. The OTC Markets is my favorite site to go to when I do research on an OTC stock for one main reason. Not that it's free, not that I don't even have to sign in. No, I like it because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all that pertinent information I'm constantly looking for. Why waste my time over at Google sorting through decades of old information when all I want is current information? And that's what this site provides, constantly current information. So save yourself a lot of hassle, save yourself a lot of time. Use the OTC Markets as your go-to site as well. So let's take a look at how the OTC Markets finished on Friday. Nothing to get excited about. I guess you could say the whole week we've been going sideways. I mean, our numbers have been fluctuating up and down, up and down. But overall, we're just going sideways. Our dollar volume has been down here at uh, $1.5 billion already this week. I think we were up over 2.1, our average, but we're right back down here. Our share volume has gone from 6 billion up to 9 billion, I believe, and now we're sitting in the middle at 7.7. .7. And our trades, doing the same thing. We've been jumping 100,000 trades up or down the whole week. So really, we've just been going sideways, trudging along right now. But that's better than falling, I'll give you that much. All right, I've got three stocks that we're gonna take a look at. They're interesting stocks. They each have some peculiarities that can create some potential for us. Then at the end, I'm gonna share my watch list with you I have for Monday. However, this watch list is based on some new oscillators I'm gonna share with you in this video, the PPO and the ADX. So if you're ready, I am too. Let's go. Right then, first stock we're taking a look at is TH, Target Hospitality Core. Now this stock did have news today, caught a lot of attention, caught a lot of price action, and that's why we're looking at it. It is on the NASDAQ, it is not on the OTC market, but remember, any stock under $5 qualifies as a penny stock, regardless of what market it's sold on. But you're going, dude, that's $7.61, that's not a penny stock. I agree, totally agree. So you're gonna have to follow me here. We're gonna look at this stock coming in through the back door and then I'm gonna throw you a curve, but that is what's gonna make it all clear to you in the end, so just keep up with me here. So yes, she did finish at $7.61 with 26% gains and she's on the NASDAQ. Now, what does this company do? Well, I got an article here which generally tells you what they do, but I'm going to focus in just a wee bit more as we jump in onto their website. But they tell us here that Target's business is housing for the oil and gas industry workers in remote locations on the Great Plains and in the Texas oil patch, along with the related hospitality services such as food service and housekeeping. These purpose-built facilities, which average roughly 600 beds each, are intended to provide a better housing option for the oil and gas industry workers than extended stays at hotels or motels or RV parks. And typically, these are for multiple years. Target's portfolio includes about 13,000 beds and 22 facilities with a gross value of $470 million. There are 15 facilities in the Permian Basin in western Texas and southern eastern New Mexico, plus five in North Dakota's Bacon Formation, and the 22nd is in Oklahoma. And this is a little outdated, so I'm sure they got more going on. The company claims to have about 20% of the market share in its sector. Its clients include such major oil and gas companies as Endacarco, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, Halliburton, Marathon, Schoenberger, and Shell. So you can see generally what it is that they do. Now, when you jump over here to their website, I'm going to go all the way up here to the top because it really does explain it. 
We perfected the art of hospitality for remote workforces in the harshest climates. We transformed quality and time to delivery for government service accounts, which is the news that just came out. They're working with the government for humanitarian situations when they need emergency housing. We optimize processes and systems to design, build, and deliver your facilities quicker than you ever imagined without sacrificing the quality your team demands. And this is what they do down here. They move tons of earth and then they build all the facilities. And they've got all different types of layouts. Each one is really pretty and they're all functionable. Now these all come with the amenities. I mean, they have restaurants, they have cafeterias, they have snack houses like you see. They also have door-to-door -door delivery. So if you just want to eat in private, they've got that available. It comes with a 24-hour security service. So nobody's getting on the property. You got to come in through a gate and be checked before you can get on. They even have transportation to the job. You may live here, but the oil fields are five miles away. They drive you back and forth to and from work. Along with all of this comes a free Wi-Fi. They actually have pools. They have saunas and exercise rooms. As a matter of fact, they got a list down here. As I said, it's a lot like a hotel. You get a room, all the furniture comes in the room, your air conditioner, your heater, uh, TV, DVD player, uh, even the sheets, the pillows, all of that comes with it. Uh, they have 24-hour dining, game and recreation room, fitness center and a sauna, the Wi-Fi is free, internet cafe, so it's everything you really need and they are booming in just the oil field business and they're expanding and now the recent news with the government is really what got everybody excited. So let's take a look at that. Now this news did come out today, July 8th. It did come out in a press release, but we're actually taking a look at it in the 8K. That's where I find it. I love to read 8Ks. So it's pretty much verbatim as the news press states. Target Hospitality Corps, one of North America's largest providers of vertically integrated modular accommodations and value-added hospitality services, today raised the range of its previously announced 2022 financial outlook by 53%, primarily related to the significantly expanded and enhanced lease service agreement, which is called the Expanded Humanitarian Contract with the Government, supporting domestic humanitarian aid efforts previously announced on July 6th. Well, this is July 10th, so they've already expanded it. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> they go on to tell us uh, this has uh, already been going on since 2014, but the company is placing increasing focus on expanding its critical hospitality services, supporting domestic humanitarian missions serving vulnerable populations. They tell us here that the expanded humanitarian contract operates with similar structure to Target's existing government service contracts, which are centered around minimum revenue commitments supported by the United States government, which means the United States government has to do a minimum of so much business with them. And they give us both the numbers, the minimum and the maximum here. They tell us the minimum revenue commitments, which consist of annual recurring lease revenue and non-reoccurring infrastructure enhancement revenue, provide for a minimum annual revenue contribution of approximately $390 million, and the services revenue component provides for a maximum initial annual total contract value of 575. So in a nutshell, it's between 390 and 575 and they've averaged it out to 505 million. Now, I'm gonna throw you a curve. We're not looking at the stock, TH. No, we're not. We are looking at its warrant, ticker THWWW, that's it, <laughs> three W's. TH, TH, triple W, Target Hospitality Corps warrant is at 90 cents, which is a penny stock, and it went up four times as much as its parent stock did, 93%. And it looks like there is more room to grow. The charts are looking good on this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Whoa, looks like we've landed over here at my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. How you doing, buddy? You need one? You need a backup to Trading Station or Weeble? Well, go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free trading account. You don't need to give them any money. Just keep your account open and voila, you've got that problem solved.
So we are looking at THWWW on the four hour chart. We are also looking at our parent company, TH. Both are on the NASDAQ. Now, let's get something straight here. Both are stocks, you trade them any way you want and you can get in and out of them whenever you want and make your money. Hopefully that's what you're doing. But there is a subtle difference between the two. This is a warrant. Now, a warrant is just like a stock, except it has the added benefit of being a coupon, a promissory note, which allows you, the holder, to buy a share of this company's stock at a cheaper price in the future. Could be two years, could be five years. They do have expiration dates on them. Now, this one particularly states that when the price of this stock hits $18 for 20 days straight, it actually closes over $18, this warrant is active. And you can then use your warrant and $11.50 and you can go buy a share of this stock. Regardless of its price, $18, $20, $100, it doesn't matter. You're going to pay $11.50. But if you're not interested in the warrant, just trade it like a stock. Get in and out of it as I'm going to show you and make some quick money. You don't have to hold it and use it as a warrant. It's just a stock. So as you can see, I've got... My oscillators down here, but they don't look the same. I'm trying two new oscillators. These are tools. You know my MACD. We use the MACD all the time and the RSI. Well, over here, I am now trying out the PPO, which is called the Percentage Price Oscillator. Very much like a MACD, but the MACD works with the price itself, where the PPO works with the percentage of the price. A subtle difference, but it can make a big difference in recognizing breakouts. The other oscillator I am trying here is the ADK. Uh, in general descriptions, it measures the strength of trend. And between the two, I am learning that they can actually point to a breakout. And it looks to be about 95% accurate. And I'm going to share that information with you as I am learning. And that's what I'm showing it to you for right now. Now, whenever any of these oscillators, any of them are pointing up, that's good. The price is moving up. And as you can see, all the oscillators are pressing up right now. Now, these two stocks are different, as I've told you. But you can see there is similarities into their chart. This is almost like a mini version. It's not like I shrunk it. It's just this one gets more activity. However, this jumped from $5 to roughly $8. So you're looking at about 60% gains, where this one jumped from $0.30 cents to $1.07. It was easier to do 300% move when the price is that cheap. So this gets a lot of activity when there's excitement around this company. When it shows more value, which they just did in that news, that's when the warrants start to move. All right, I'm going to bring over THWW over here, W, third W. All right, there is your oscillators, your PPO, and your ADX for this stock. And as you can see, it is ripping. A little bit closer on that, you can see the technicals. We have a tsunami on the MACD. We're in the fire on the four hour. On the four hour over here, it's the same thing. Everything is just going to the moon. Let's drop down to that 20 day, one hour view. Let's see how everything looks on that. So we hit a low bubble there. Didn't really seem to do anything because it hit it again. And then that's when it bounced off. But the news today is when it launched. Oscillators, all of them to the moon still. We got two days of solid growth. And I want you to see here, look at how small the price bars are. Once you got on top of that 10, the price bars became double and triple in size. Once she got on top of the 200, the bars got gigantic. The weight was lifted off her shoulders and she could move. And she is running right now, folks. Even after market, she is still pushing new highs. Let's come on down to that five-day, five-minute view. Whew, what a beautiful chart. Look at this. She did go sideways for a very long time. Very long time. Now, what do you see in this chart? What we see is she left the 50 right here. She jumped up, got fell under it, then got on top of it again and really launched away from the 50. Got so far away from it. Folks, these are like rubber bands. You can only take the SMAs to a certain distance away before they come back together. And they can either slap back together really hard with a fall or 
it can just go sideways and wait for the SMA to catch up to it, which is all this one did. You can see that. As soon as it got close enough, it could feel it. Oh, oh, it was reaching for it. Bam. There you are. There you are. It got its footing right there perfectly. Everything landed on it, and there it took off again, folks. And all the oscillators are great. Everything looks great. Now, the volume is a little bit weak right here. It's a warrant. Warrants do not get the liquidity as stocks do. But when they move, they move well. So this is on the NASDAQ, right? So you can buy it pre-market, after market. So on Monday, this stock on your watch list, in your scan, so that you can see what the volume is. You're going to pay attention to what this stock does. This could be, one, a Momo play. Leftover momentum. It could bounce fast in the morning, just like it did here. Boink. I mean, this jumped from uh, 46 cents up to 80 cents. So you had about an 80% jump. And what time is that? Uh, 10.30. 10.30, one hour, you had an 80% jump. And then you had to hold on to it all day to get the rest. So you could see a nice jump in the morning. And you may want to get out. Why ride it sideways, frustrating yourself? Get out, take your money, unless you feel it's going to continue rising. I have no idea where a ceiling can be. Let's just take a back out. Let's see where that four-hour goes. She's in new ground, folks. Let me see if I go back a year. No. Let's see if we go back three years. Woo! All right. Well, she was up to $2 three years ago with a serious fall. Uh, we got uh, a line there, which is right about where she's at, isn't it? Yeah. And then the next one would be about right there. Dollar eighteen. So we might be able to push this from ninety cents to a dollar eighteen. But God only knows with warrants. Warrants can do some crazy stuff, folks. You can see multiple hundreds of percent jumps very quickly with very little volume. So I would watch this. Watch it in the morning. Watch it all day. But THWWW is now worth more. That's what that news was all about. They have just increased their revenues, their outlook, their projections, and that's what warrants are based on, the value of the company. If it looks like the company's worth more and the price is going to go up, you want to get this stock cheap, this warrant. The cheaper you buy it and then get to buy a share of stock for cheap, it's a win-win situation. And everything in between that gap is yours, right? I love warrants. All right, let's go take a look at another stock I got for you. Hey, if you're a regular viewer of my videos, you probably recall that I've already covered this stock. It was back on June 24th, ticker WSFT Wikisoft Core. It was June 24th, the last time they had news. And it was pretty relevant, important news, but it wasn't very specific and it left a lot of speculation, which is what I had said. They give us more information, this is probably going to run. Well, they gave us all the information we were looking for and it didn't run. It actually dropped today. Ticker WSFT, Wikisoft Core, finished the day at 45 cents with almost 8% loss. She's on the middle tier of the OTC. That means all of her financials are audited. That means she's more transparent, more trustworthy. She's got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. More information that's been validated for you. So we like to see this. Looks good. Now, the last time we looked at this on June 24th, we were given some real pertinent information. They had basically been took over. ILUS, ticker I-L-U-S, got the major stakehold in this company. And they were changing their ticker and they were changing their name. And that's all we knew. And that's what they now tell us here in the description. That Wikisoft Core has been acquired by I-L-U-S. We are changing our name to Quality Industrial Core which really didn't give us any heads up of what they were going to be doing. So they've added another sentence here. They tell us that they are going to aim to be a global leader in the manufacture and assembly of industrial equipment and precision engineered technology for the industrial oil and gas and utility sectors. So now we have an idea, but the press release actually gives us a lot of information. The curious thing is it fell. It did fall. I can't tell you why it fell, but I can tell you that the charts show an opportunity after this dip and the strength of the chart right now, but I'm going to let you decide. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Not much. Hardly even worth talking about. She barely had 20,000 extra shares today. 
under the radar? I don't know, but definitely not being recognized for the news being anything special. And I thought it would be. Share structure. What is our float? All right, we got a grand float here, folks. Almost 22 million. Let's just call it 22 million. That's a great float. Absolutely is for a company that is just launching into their new business, right? Or oh, you don't know what the business is yet. Don't rush me. I'm getting there. Financials were horrible the last time we looked here. Uh, quarterly, I think we saw they were in the hole. Well, whatever they were when we looked last, it's bad. So they need to have some numbers thrown on the table. And the press release does that today. And I do believe that is the most current 8K. Yeah, that is going to be reckoning what I'm going to share with you right now. So when we jump over here to the news, it was right here, June 24th, Wikisoft Core announces name change to Quality Industrial Core and is in the process of a ticker symbol change. And that's when they also inform us all about the eyeless deal being completed. But today, they had news come out. Wikisoft Core announces binding letter of intent to acquire the majority stake of Quality International Company. Let me show you what we got here. This is the same news, but now they fill in all the blanks. They tell us everything that they're doing. Wikisoft Core today announced that they have signed a binding letter of intent to acquire 51% of Quality International Company Limited, a United Arab Emirates headquartered company which manufactures custom solutions for oil and gas, energy, water desalination, taking salt out of the water, wastewater, offshore, and public safety sectors. Now, this is how big they are. This is a description. If you were going on a date, this would be the information you'd want to hear. Quality International Company is headquartered in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, where its 1,350 employees operate from state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities totaling over 10 million square feet. The company's been manufacturing for two decades with a wealth of global multinationals as reference customers. It has all the required oil and gas industry certifications in place and is on several global preferred vendor lists. With $75 million worth of orders currently in production and a further $230 million in confirmed orders waiting to be fulfilled, the company's revenue is forecasted to comfortably exceed $100 million in 2022. That's this company now. This company is going to go from zero to $100 million comfortably, no problem. The agreed total valuation of Quality International is $300 million. The attorneys on both sides are now working through the outstanding formalities to close the transaction in the soonest possible time frame. He tells us here, months of hard work have finally materialized in signing a binding letter of intent. Months. So when they say they're going to close this in the shortest amount of time, I believe them. You know, a lot of these deals take years to put together. They put this together in months. The acquisition is a monumental milestone for ILIS and is the first of many larger acquisitions that we are working on. This takes ILIS into a new dimension as we deliver on our plans to continue to build the ILIS conglomerate. And I truly believe they are on their way to do this. Quality International Company will work closely with ILIS, which owns Wikisoft, to ramp up the expansion of both companies. ILIS is working to strengthen Quality International's offerings in North America and Europe, while Quality International will provide additional engineering and manufacturing capability, as well as facilities for ILIS Precision Engineered Public Safety Technologies in the Middle East. Now, everything I just read, they bulleted right there. And I'm not going to go and read it all for you, but it's up there for you to see. You can also go check out this news press. So there it is. They filled in the who, the what, the where, and the how much. And the stock fell today. And it sounds all great to me. Oil is a booming industry. I know we're going into electric, but why is the oil sector still rising then? Because there's been a squeeze put on it in a lot of different ways. So this is decades old company already in place, already making money. All they've done is plugged into it and the power, the money comes to them. That's the change we needed to see. So let's go see what that chart looks like and see if you see the opportunity I see. Back here at Think or Swim, TOS, uh, we are looking at ticker WSFT, six-month, four-hour chart. She has 
fallen. We can see the 200 was way up here. She had a high back here of like a dollar 17 a year ago. Has fallen really hard. Really went limp and flat, but hit a low here of a penny and a half. And right now we're at 45 cents. We had a triangle that she got trapped into here. You could see how she was bouncing in there, and we were waiting for a breakout. When she comes outside of that parameter, could be down and negative, could be up and positive. She actually had an up and positive breakout and then hit this high right there. Boom, she hit that high, bounced down, bounced up, bounced down, bounced up. So we got a lot of activity going on right now. And the news today caused it to drop severely. She broke through both sides of the parameter and is underneath it, but she's sitting on a very strong support that she could easily bounce off of. Technicals really don't show that. They're all still pushing down right now. Let's come in on that 20 day, one hour view. All right, so these two lines here is the triangle and there's our top support where she bounced off of, hit a new high and pulled back she should have stopped right there and bounced up for a pullback. That's a fall. Now she did come back up. She did come back all the way up to here. So she didn't stick down here. That was all rejected. Boom, boom, boom. It all got bought up right back up to here, the 45. So she's right back inside of that parameter. We're waiting for a breakout. Technicals are pushing down. We got our blue line on the wrong side, hitting the signal line and going under. That doesn't look great. Technicals on our new oscillators, the PPO and the ADX, they too do not look very good right now. So let's come down to that five day, five minute. All right, so there's your severe drop. And it came, is that at the end of the day? It certainly is. All right, so she went sideways. You know, you can see for the last four days, she's just been going sideways in that very tight channel. Hit the floor, bounced up, hit the ceiling, hit the floor, and then broke it. Put her heel right through it and fell and is now in the basement. Almost, almost hit that and has come back up. Uh, technicals do show recovery right now. Now, I'll tell you a little secret here, and we'll probably take a better look at this later. But this has a mirror effect. Putting these uh, technicals the way I have them. The PPO on the top, you see how the line is coming down and the one on the bottom is coming up. When they get super close, the closer they get, the better. And as soon as they both break out and do that mirror, they just, you know, they come together and then they go out. As soon as they start to separate, you get a almost a 95% chance of a strong run. When they come together, the PPO and this ADX, when they come together, meeting here in the center, and then push away, that push away is when you get in. And right now, they are coming together, which means the price is falling. Everything seems to be falling right now. Not fast. It's already had the fast drop, but it doesn't seem secure. So I think there's going to be a very good entry price to get into this. Let's see what it looks like just for today. All right, so she did take a big drop right there. What was that? Like uh, 20 minutes before the bell. I don't know. Somebody wanted to sell off to invest in something else, and there was a huge spread here. What is the spread? We got a seven cent spread, and it dropped from 49 to 37. Well, that's more than seven cents. Wow, that was a, a few sales, but there's a lot of volume there. A lot of volume was selling off here at the end of the day and somebody saw a deal and started to buy in. And that's the way I see it. It's a deal right now. Not only because of where it fell from. I mean, you can see its average is right up there. It's already broke out of the parameter once, was out of it for a day or two, came back in. It, I believe it's gonna break out again. And this time, because of the news that did not get the proper appreciation on uh, Friday, I think it's going to run. Now, is it going to run Monday? I don't know. The technicals don't show a pop right now, but she has dipped lower than she should, and the news was hotter than they noticed. So I think it's going to run. What do you think? 
Our last stock probably has more questions about it than it does answers, but I see some potential around the corner. Something has to pop here. This is ticker CMTNF. This is Cullinan Metals Core. It's a Canadian mining company. Now, I normally don't cover mining companies. Not that I got anything against them personally, just not my cup of tea. And this one did have news come out on Friday that they acquired three mines, two copper and one gold. And though that's good news, that's really not why we're looking at it, though it counts for something. You see, they had more news come out on Friday. They also had a ton of filings come out on Friday. The only thing that did not happen on Friday, the price did not move at all for one reason. They're not on the market. <laughs> no, they've been off the market since May, I believe it is here in the US and off the market in Canada since June. I found a chart over here at Google and it says that June 30th was the last day it was sold in Canada for 62 Canadian cents, which is about 47 US cents. So she's been off the market, not for anything bad as far as I can tell. However, in saying that, when you look at the disclosures, maybe there was something going on there. So, I can't give you any relative volume because she hasn't been on the market for a while. We can discuss the share structure. In one of the pieces of news that came out on Friday, they talk about a forward split. They did a forward split, one to one. They took the outstanding shares and basically doubled it. And this is the finished product because they did it back in April. So we have 21.4 million in the float, which is a fantastic float, that's great. What is most curious to notice here is that the unrestricted shares, these are the shares the insiders own. Their shares aren't on the open market for me and you to buy and sell. That's 180,000. That's one person most likely. So it looks like there's not a lot of attention being given to this company by whales. But in saying that, it isn't really gonna affect the price when she gets back on the market and the excitement from the investors surges the price. Nobody's gonna be thinking about that. It's just gonna be taken off. And we're not in this for the long run. We're in it to grab some money, put it in our pocket and get the heck out of there. So let's take a look at the disclosures. There's a lot of information we can pick up here. I want you to notice that every single disclosure came out on Friday, all of them. But what's more important, period and date. This is the period that they were covering for. This is June's quarter of last year. These are over a year old. Here's September's. Those are nine months from last year. We have last year's annuals. We also have, well, just this year's quarterly reports for March. There's an array of them here, and most of them are far way back behind. They were late. If this is when they filed them, they were all late. And they may have been on the expert market for all I know. But right now, it is pink current, verified profile, transfer agent verified. And the OTC market sees it because they're the ones that put it there. So if they were in hot water, they sure look out of it now. Looks like there's a lot going on. And when you look at the news, all of that news came out on Friday. All of it. And each one is different and pertinent important information. They raised $278,000 in their initial public offering. So they're making money. And they listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Hot darn. Then they go ahead and appoint Mark Enright Morin as president, along with appointing John Bean as CFO. New head honchos. All on Friday. They tell us about that forward share split right here. And then there's the news about the new mines that they got. So there's a lot going on all at the same time. Looks like the front door is wide open and this thing's gonna go back on the market. And when it does, it's gonna pump and jump. Now we're not looking at this for a long hold, it's for a quick gain, folks. Everything looks righteous to me right now. So put this ticker, CMTNF, on your watch list. I can't show you a chart. There is no chart in America. There's just nothing there. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they changed their ticker. Maybe they changed their name and it just haven't gotten on the market yet. But in either case, when it comes on the market, I'm expecting a jump. So keep your eye on CMTNF. And we'll come back to it. Once it comes back on the market, we'll take another look at it and see what actually did happen. I'm now gonna do one last thing. I'm gonna share my watch list with you that I have for Monday. These are charts that have something set up using my new oscillators as well. I went searching this weekend and this is what I found. And if I can find the right time period, 
I can easily show you why each one stands out to me. All right, so we are looking first at CHNC, China Infrastructure. We've already got some support lines drawn here. She did come down across the 200, bounced off that support, and is now sitting just on top of her 200. Technicals. Now, remember what I was telling you. With the PPO and the ADX, when they start to pull apart evenly, like this, you normally get a very strong gain. And we see that that is exactly what's going on right now. MACD is showing a crossover occurring right now, and the RSI is climbing. But it's pretty much because of this spread and where she sits on the five minute that I am looking at CHNC. Next one, BRNE. Um, technicals, and we're on the five minute right now. The technicals are ripping. Everything is on fire, everything is pushing up. I do want to back out, see if there's anything that really jumped out at me. Well, the technicals are ripping. Now, we talked about the PPO, the blue line here, and this bottom one, the ADX, the red line, going apart and the price getting bigger. And when they come together, the price gets down. It falls. Well, when they're both going up, you have the same thing as if they're going apart. This is a great sign. Anytime any of these oscillators are going up, it's positive. So you never have to get confused about that one. And this is all ripping and tipping straight up. Hit a high here. Uh, let's see if it's set up on the four hour. We did just break the 200. Our volume is getting a little bit stronger right now. We jumped. I mean, you had small rolls here, but that is a huge bar jump right there. She's gotten herself up on top of the 200. Everything still looks strong for BRNE. Another one that looks real strong, you can see right there, this is OPTI. In the last 10 days, she has worked her way slowly up underneath on top of the 10. Once she got up on the 10, she has started to fly. Let's see if there's anything else that stands out. She's about ready to break the 200, but I'm thinking there may be something, well, the technicals. Look at this, folks. Everything is on the launch pad taken off. Every oscillator shows that it is ripping. And you can see the curves are getting stronger and the bars are getting bigger. Five minute, same exact thing. She has rolls, but she is doing her thing. And look at those technicals. They are all ripping right now. Whew. Look at that finish day bar. That finish day bar was outstanding. Jump from 0024 up to 003. That's about a 20, 24% increase just at the end of the day. I keep my eye on OPTI. This one fell. This is TRSI. Let me back this up because I don't see anything right there. Oh, I do. I do. First off, look what we got here. Okay. You can see right here is where it got close. Right down here. And then started to spread. We started to get in this. Then it started coming back together right there. That's when she started to fall, and now she's about ready to spread again. We have a crossover in the MACD, and our RSI is going up. I do want to back out. Seems to me there's probably something more. We're bouncing off of a low bubble as well. All right. On the long run, you see these are coming together. So that means the price may continue to fall. Let's see what we got on the 20-day, one-hour view. There's that low bubble. She has fallen down. Technicals are coming close right there. Okay, that's a beautiful one. So you want to keep your eye on this folks watch it come close And as soon as they hit the point of you know That's as close as I'm getting and start to repel from each other That's when you'd want to jump into this one So you keep your eye on this and you watch for both of them to start to repel at the same time It is T R S I S Y S X another one. I'm looking at Let's see what time zone, what time frame makes that jump up. Well, you can see the price, the gap we got here. Believe it or not, it has been growing. Our volume is real strong here. Um, <clears throat> so here you had that jump. That was that spread right there. As soon as they got as close as they could get and then started to push away, you did have a very strong jump. She is just under the 200 right now, but that doesn't seem to be what I'd be looking at. Ooh, she took a dip right there. I do see another one of those dip setups. And let me come in on the five day, five minute. Oh, there you go. Now it's an obvious play. <laughs> see, something should jump out at you. If you have to search the chart, maybe it's just not there. Well, we can see this one had a huge drop. It dropped all the way from, call it 36 
down to 22. She did bounce back a little bit and she had a huge jump here at the end of the day. Technicals are all looking good right now. Everything is going up. That's what I was looking at. That was SYSX on the five minute. Keep your eye on that on Monday. UCPA. Nope, don't see anything on the five minute jumping out at me. Standard 20 uh, day, one hour. Well, we do definitely have a curvature here. It has broke the 200 and is sitting right underneath it. So it's tested it and it is testing it a second time. Technicals are very strong. Very strong on the one hour. Looks like a continuation for UCPA. Definitely a huge jump right here. And you can see her high back here is uh, two, almost three cents, which is about 800, 900% gains if it really wanted to take off. Next one, got three left for you. D-U-T-V. I will take a picture of this and enlarge it at the end when I yabber yabber <laughs> so you can see what they exactly are. D-U-T-V, uh, nothing jumping out at me on the four hour about the one year. Uh, no, not the one year. 20 day, one hour. Uh, oh, I see a spread right there. All right, you see it pushing away right there and right there. It's like a mirror image. It looks like a widening opening. And they don't have to be real close. If you get the impression they have to be close within, you know, just a smidge, no. They can be far apart. As long as they were moving towards each other and then started moving apart, you get that repelling activity, which normally causes a jump. And we see we got a positive crossover happening right now, bouncing off of the signal line. RSI is climbing, and we got our mouth our fish mouth opening up there. This looks like a good continuation for Monday. D-U-T-V. This is C-Y-D-Y. C-Y-D-Y. Nothing jumping out for me right there. Let's check the uh, four hour. I see she is coming up. Everything, the 50 day right there. Let's zoom in. The yellow 50 day is crossing the 200. That is a power move, folks. We've got the 200 haul coming up. Everything is getting in position here. All the technicals are pushing up. Anytime a plant is pushing up, it's a good thing. Let's see if this shows anything on a five minute. Stair stepping hard. You can see she does have a lot of volatility, but she is moving up. And the technicals are a little funky right now on the close up. But on the long term, if you've got patience, it looks like she is on the climb. And the last one we're taking a look at is MSVI. That's the last one on my watch list. This is Marijuana Strategic Ventures. They just changed their name to Mushroom. Their new ticker will be MYCO. They've had some attention here recently. Let's see where the picture is that jumps out at me. Well, she was riding the 50-day, has crossed the 200, and is gaining momentum. She's pushing out fast. Technicals are all pushing up on the one hour. Any magic jump out at me on the four hour? Well, that's where all her volume is here in the last five days. This is where all the climb is happening. Everything looks very strong right there. Five minute, just to pan in. Again, a lot of volatility. If you're, if you're just in it for the day, you can probably catch these bounces and make some money. But if you want to stick in it for a couple days because you see her rising up, rising up, rising up, you're going to have to be patient. Don't watch her. Shit will drive you crazy seeing these drops. All right, folks, that is my watch list. I will enlarge that for you and we'll show, show that to you right now. Yeah, I know, not your ordinary bunch of bananas that we look at. Those are some interesting stocks. News that was overlooked. Important news that I forecasted should have some activity. I think it's just going to be delayed. Or situations that are brewing up that look very peculiar for a stock that's been off the market. And I know how stocks react when they come back on the market. So I brought these to your attention to put on your watch list. When volume pops, you're going to be aware of it and maybe get yourself some big cha-ching. Now, my watch list for Monday. Ah, my watch list. There we go. Hey, this is all based on technicals, folks. Strictly technicals, primarily experimenting with my new osculators, the PPO and the ADX. I believe that's right, ADX. I am checking out to see how well this works. And if this really works well, I'm going to be able to put out faster alerts, probably for bigger gains. Now, of course, 
You can't get any of these alerts out here. You got to come into Titan Trading. We put the address up at the end of the news at the beginning of this video. Folks, Titan Trading is part of Penny Boys. We discuss penny stocks, OTC stocks, crypto, and NFTs. If you like options in the major exchange, we got Penny Boys right next door. We're all the same group, same people. We have professional traders, lots of free training. We do have paid for training, paid for alerts, and free alerts, and lots of chat. Folks, you can go wherever you want, and it's free to come on in and test the waters. I would love to see you there. The more information we get, the better for all of us. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.